Hi, I'm Rocco Steno and welcome to Storymakers. Today we're visiting with Jeff Mack and we're going to be discussing two stories, Moose, Goose and Mouse, just a story. So thank you for being with us. Hi Rocco, thanks for having me. Hi everybody watching. Well, let's start with Moose, Goose and Mouse. So that is a book that you created with a friend. That's right, I made this book with my friend Mordecai. It was actually Mordecai's idea. Mordecai and I were good friends for many, many years and we were having lunch one day and he told me all about this cool book that he was making and he asked if I would help him make it. So we worked together on this book. I guess there's a moose, a goose, and a mouse in this book. That's right. There's a moose, a goose, and a mouse. Three characters, and they rhyme. Can you tell us how you and Mordecai created the illustrations for the book? Sure. So Mordecai and I made these illustrations using something called collage. And collage is when you take different pieces of paper that you've drawn on or painted on or maybe printed on, and you cut them up and you glue them together and you make a new picture out of a combination of all those other pictures. And in this case, we used a special tool to make this collage. We used a computer. And a computer can be really good because it can help you do little tricks with the collage that you couldn't actually do by hand. So can you show us the process? Sure. The first thing you wanna do is you take your paintings like the green for the moose and the pink for the mouse and the blue for the goose. And you take your drawings and you put those inside of a scanner. You open the lid, you put the paper inside, you close the lid and the scanner is going to take a photo of these pictures and it's going to put them into the computer. So here I am on my computer, and I am going to take my drawing that I did, and I'm gonna take my paper, and I'm gonna move my colored paper wherever I want it to go, and I'm gonna take that drawing, and I'm gonna make it a little bit see-through. See how I can see the colored paper behind it? Okay, I'm gonna use that drawing as a guide. And I'm going to choose my lasso tool. And my lasso tool will let me trace around the outside of the character. So I'm just gonna follow along the outline of the moose. And I wanna make sure I trace everything. So I'm gonna make sure I get all of the feet and the legs and the tail and the moose's back and neck, and the moose's ear, and the antlers. Gotta get all of the antlers. There's a lot of antlers here to get. Trace around this one. Doesn't have to be perfect. We'll know it's a moose when it's done. Around his droopy nose. And that's that. You see those dotted lines around the outside? That tells me that that is the part that I have selected or chosen. I'm going to choose the inside of these legs also. And now, if I want, right now I've chosen the inside of the shape, I can choose the outside of the shape. And then with my delete button, I can erase all of the paper that isn't in the shape of the moose, like that. And then I can get rid of the line for just a minute and you can see that the paper is in the shape of a moose. Do, 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 do. And then I can bring that line back. I can make it a little bit solid again. And now I can make the layer completely transparent so you can see right through the shape. And let's say I don't wanna have all of that outline showing. Let's say I only wanna have part of it showing. So I can go ahead and I can use my eraser tool and I can erase parts of the outline just like this. I can do that pretty slowly and carefully if I want. 
Or if I want to do it a little faster than this, I can use my lasso tool again. And I can go right around and I can trace all the parts that I don't want to have in my picture. And I can delete them just like that. And that's all that I'm going to show of the details of the moose for this picture. So let's see what that looks like with all the other characters. These are only the details that I'm showing for those characters. We can add some eyes. And then when I, add, when I do the same thing with all the other characters, you'll see that they all add up the same way. I've done everything in this picture just like I did with the moose. All of those different pieces of paper I've painted on and then I've collaged them together to make this picture. And I can add a little bit of rain, a little more rain, and that's how I made the picture for moose, goose, and mouse. I'm sure the first time you create the character isn't the exact character that's in the book. So you have uh, some different versions you can show us? Definitely. So when the pictures start out, you know, you only have sort of a rough idea of how the story is going to go and what the characters will look like. So you start out by making a sketch, right? And that's just something you do lightly with pencil and you kind of scribble the characters in fast. It doesn't need to be perfect. You don't need to erase any of your lines. You just get that sketch down really quick so you know what you're thinking about. Then after you do the sketch, you can go back and you can do the lines more carefully. You can redraw, you can even trace over your sketch. And if you're using the computer, it actually makes it pretty easy to trace over a drawing. So here you can see, this is Mordecai's drawing and he's added some words. He's taped those words into the picture so he knows where they're going to go in the final book. But we don't usually tape the pages in for the final. We use the computer to add the words in afterwards. Do you have a favorite drawing from the book? I do, Rocco. My favorite drawing in the book is this scene where the characters are racing on the caboose of the train and they're going up and down hills like a big roller coaster. And this is a sketch from that page. And this is the final picture. This is what it looks like when you add color. And you can see after I added the color, I added some trees and some extra clouds and things that weren't in the sketch. So, you know, your ideas gradually develop. And I just think this is a really fun page um, because I love roller coasters and I just think it'd be so fun to be on this train track going up and down these hills really fast with these crazy characters. You mentioned a caboose. Now, caboose rhymes with moose and goose. What is a caboose? Yes, it does. And a caboose is the last part of the train. So a train has an engine at the front and then it has all of these cars that are linked together like a chain. And then the very last part of the train, the very last car is called the caboose. And it usually has like a little patio or a little porch that you can go onto and you can look out the back of the train and you can see the tracks moving behind you. Yep, that's, that's the caboose of the train. And that's what they use to make their house out of. The book has many rhymes like moose, goose, and caboose. So I'm going to ask our viewers to come up with three, at least three rhyming words that can become a story. Share your three or more rhyming words in the comments section. So Jeff, can we learn how to draw one of the characters from your book? Absolutely, Rocco, and it's really easy to do it. In fact, in this case, I think I can show you how to draw the mouse from Moose, Goose, and Mouse, how to draw that using just a few letters of the alphabet. So if you can write the letters of the alphabet, and I'll bet you can, then you can draw this mouse. Would you like to see how to do this? I would. So I am going to use just these letters to draw this mouse. I'm going to use the letter C, the letter V, the letter X, the letter Z, and the letter L, S, O, and U. So the first letter I'm going to use is the C, and I'm going to draw that right here. 
and that's going to be the ear of the mouse. And then I'm gonna draw the O right inside the C. So we've got the inside of the ear. I'm gonna take the V, I'm gonna turn that V onto its side so it's pointing this way, like that, and that's going to be the nose of the mouse. And then right at the end of the nose, I'm gonna draw the X for the whiskers. Inside here, I'm gonna draw another O. That's gonna be the mouse's eye. Underneath the ear and the nose, I'm gonna write the letter U. That's the mouse's body. And then I'm gonna take that letter Z and I'm gonna draw that right here. That's one of the mouse's arms. If I can draw a frontward Z, I can probably draw a backward Z and that will go right here. That's his other arm. And then I'll take for leg the letter L and I'll come down here and draw one leg and then another leg like this. And then our last letter that we haven't used that is the letter S. And what do you think that's gonna be? It's gonna be the tail. And then one last important little detail to bring this mouse to life, we need to add a dot inside the eye. And when you add a dot in the eye, just for some reason, it just brings that character right to life. So that's how you can draw the mouse from Moose, Goose, and Mouse using just a few letters of the alphabet. That's terrific, and it looks like even I can do that. Give it a try. You know all of the lines that you need to use, so I'll bet you can do it. Well, thank you so much for that. And your other book, Just a Story. Tell us about that. So, Rocco, my other book is called Just a Story. And I'm really excited about this book. It's, and you can tell this little kid is excited too. It's about this boy who goes to the library with his grandmother. And when he's at the library, he discovers this interesting book on the floor there. And he picks up the book and he starts to read it. And as he reads the book, some interesting things start to happen. These pirates come out of a trap door and this tree grows and they get closer to the boy and there's a lion in the tree and the lion's almost gonna eat the boy and then there's a herd of elephants and then the herd of elephants get stomped on by a big baby dragon and the story builds and builds and all these exciting things are happening and I don't wanna give away the ending of the story. I want you to read it. But the whole idea is, can you guess whether the things that are coming after the boy in the story are real or are they just part of the story that he's reading? That's the big mystery of just a story. Boys and girls, if you're at home watching this with someone, perhaps you can have a conversation about that question. Are the pirates and the animals real? How did they get there? You have so many great illustrations in that book. I know it's hard, you know, to pick a favorite, but Jeff, do you have a favorite? I do actually, Rocco. My favorite page in Just a Story is this page, and it's where the alien comes with a tractor beam to take all of the characters up into space. And you can see, you actually have to turn the book on its side to read this page which is one of the things I love about books, is that you can make the book go in any direction you want. You can read it left to right, you can read it top to bottom, you can turn it completely upside down. So this page really makes you turn the book on its side to find out what's happening here. I can't wait to get my copy of Just a Story so I can see that spread in person. So Jeff, thank you so much for sharing both books with us today. You're welcome, Rocco. I had such a good time. This was really fun. So remember, until next time, read a book in any format.